All right. I want to welcome everyone again for listening to in to KIEZ 106.7 FM. And together we are the voice of the community. Hey, I got a special guest. I mean, I normally say special, but this is a real, real special guest. He's a true leader in our community. Uh, it's Mr. Mike Abrams. How's it going today? I am wonderful. I'm good as I can be. And uh, I believe if, as long as I got breath in me, I feel like it don't matter what I'm going through. I'm ready to fight. That's what I'm talking about. Those are true words of encouragement. That's right. It doesn't matter. We got to make a difference. No matter the situation we're in, we accept it, and we, uh, we attempt to make changes from within. So I like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's power. So, Mike, how you quarantining over there? Well, um, I, I'll say this. Uh, although, although this is the, this whole quarantine and this pandemic is, um, we all having to make adjustments and, and, uh, it's completely altered our lifestyle. But I, I will say that even, even in the midst of all of the negatives and all of the things that we not, we don't consider normal. I believe there are a few things that we can consider some positives and some pros, even during this time. Uh, I personally have been spending more time than I ever uh, have with my family due to the fact that I don't have to always be on the hustle and grind. Um, I personally have been uh, educating myself in different areas, uh, building myself up. I've been doing a whole lot more fishing um, <laughs> and, and gardening and, and doing the things that I feel that are necessary in order for, uh, for us to survive. I've been teaching my kids a whole lot more. We've been having class at home. So I've had a, uh, an opportunity to, to develop them and, and train and spend more time with them. So it's some blessings. It's some low key blessings, you know, even in, in, in these, um, like the old folks say, the, in perilous times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sound like you, 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 what you're doing is actually manifesting the essential elements of a family which actually creates a community. So you're, yeah. as you say, you're fishing the old fashioned way. You eat what you actually catch. You're actually putting your hands and the children's hands in the ground. So you're teaching them to actually plant the seed, water it, take care of it. Same thing, the exact same how it equates to human development. Man, that's awesome. And, and I do believe that <clears throat> uh, if we are to call ourselves a responsible people, I think that we should be able to, um, I think that we should be able to 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 de completely become independent of uh of 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 all other people or all other groups or all other you know ways of, of of survival. I think I think it's our responsibility to ensure that for ourselves and not wait on nobody else to do it. So I'm just following in in alignment with um you know with with nature. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I saw, uh, I see the, the, sh the shirt you have on. It had an emblem. It says Haiti, and I, I know. Yeah, that's what they do over there, right? Oh uh, yeah, it's just, it's just uh one of the uh, a lot of people get it mis mistaken. They call Haiti the black, first black republic, but it wasn't a republic. It was an empire. And, Whoa! Um, talk, talk yeah. to me about that. Yeah, and so um, when we, um. And I say, when I say we, I, I have to let me put things into perspective. Um, African people uh, all over the diaspora. That's, uh, uh, we are, even, even though I am not from IET or Haiti, uh, I know that I am connected to them because we, we are all Africans. And so whether you are in Jamaica or whether you are in America, or whether you are in, in Haiti, uh, we all have that same commonality, and uh, and 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 so we all have that same and share that same African um, blood and and root, which is which is an excellent thing, which is a beautiful thing. In fact, we you know, the the closer we get back to that, I believe, the closer we can get back to uh, being that self sufficient, independent um, people once more, like like we like we have always been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how you actually presented that or you're conveying that message that we all are connected, uh, just like uh, we are in America. I am an African, but I'm an African in America. In America, absolutely. That's right. And, 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 and the, the dynamic thing about uh, Haiti is that they, they came up against 
the, the major superpowers of the world and defeated them all. They defeated the, the, the French. They defeated the British, you know? And so... Because um, I know at one time they were very big into, what, sugar? Well, sugar, yeah. Yeah, that was the what what the number one commodity was, um, the, known as the sugar plantation, and of course there was a lot of strenuous work involved in that in that production. In fact, they didn't even have a a, a long life expectancy. But when the the interesting thing about it is when Haiti defeated all of those superpowers, they made declarations, and those one and a few of those declarations were. Um, we created an empire, mean, meaning that there is no one above us, not a king, not a queen, not a president. There is no one that we must bow to. And so they came up with the empire of Haiti, and they declared that any black person, regardless of where you are from, any black person, once you step foot on this soil, you are declared an, a free person. And uh, hmm. And also, um, they had their own constitution. And even in that constitution, they make strong stances, such as, um, you know, a white person will not be able to own land in our territory because they understood the nature of uh, white supremacy, racism, which is still what we are dealing with. And, and uh, they understood that the Europeans did not intend to share their power. And, do not intend to share their power. And so as long as we continue to uh, leave them in a position where they are over us, then they will, we will always be in a position where we're begging for justice to be, to be handed to us. Yeah. That, that, and that's something that we, uh, we should never wait on. We should never wait on someone else to give us justice. Those are things that we have to sign for ourselves yeah power is never given power is demanded and taken because why would someone in power want to uh equalize you uh and, and that's the challenge that we're having right here in america uh but i'm sorry i forgot to introduce who you were the uh, definitely mike abrams we're talking to today but you represent i know last time i talked to you or i saw you through facebook you had just finished up maybe your master's or, or, or doctorate. Doc, yeah, my doctorate. In, okay. Um, and you also represent, represent CPI. So walk us through the stages of the doctorate uh, transition and also tell us about what is CPI. Okay. Um, well, I, I'll say this. Um, I, I have a doctorate in, in biblical psychology. Um, the majority of the, the, the world has some type of uh, religious beliefs and those beliefs have a, a, a great impact on how people live their lives and uh, and, and, and even how uh, they view themselves in relation to the rest of society. So I, I believe that such a thing, a thing that has that much of an impact is something that I, uh, I felt the need to, to really dive into, really study, because uh, uh, religion is, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it can be used for, it, it, can, it has many different uses. It can be used for the upliftment and, and providing spirituality or spiritual concepts. And it also be, can, can be used in ways to control the people and manipulate uh, people from the natural, uh, the natural actions. And so uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was um, when dealing with people, no matter what religion you are, I want to be able to connect with a person and deal, and deal with that person based on factual information. And I also want to use that factual information to, uh, to help us to, 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 to build the things that are necessary for survival. I believe survival is number one. And uh, first law of nature is uh you know self-preservation so so that's my area of uh expertise uh, um learning the different religions and the backgrounds and the history involved and how it shapes a person's mindset which uh ultimately dictates a person's actions and so i i it doesn't matter what angle you come from whether you're coming from a christian angle or 
uh, Islam, Judaism, whatever the angle, I'm prepared to, to, to you know, be able to engage in, in that particular lane and also help to steer us in the direction that we, we should be. You know, that's, that's always moving forward towards freedom and independence. Yeah, I mean, that definitely makes sense there, the way you break it down, because uh, people lose their lot in, in certain countries, people lose their lives due to war over religion. And if oh, there's yeah. a confusion there, how can one or the other meet in the middle and dialogue if there's two separate platforms? But by you being a mediator, I, well, I say the word mediator, and understanding that the different sects and the different religions, we can actually talk and meet on one accord. So that's, uh, and that's why I always looked at you as a leader in the community, because I don't know if the people really remember, you're, you were one of the voices when the town of Monroe experienced police brutality in our own community. And that was a fight that you pushed for years. Mm -hmm. So tell us, walk us through that. Well, well, we we uh we've been having issues in in um our communities with police brutality, but the problem is that um as long as you allow things to happen, nothing will change. And the 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 paradigm was set that uh and in and, and in some ways I believe it still exists that white people feel like the reason why that they they do the things that they do to black people is because they can simple as that there's no other way no other explanation needed the reason why i'm putting my foot on your neck or at least my knee on your neck and i'm keeping it there is because i can and what you gonna do about it so is that so, power that is most definitely power and that's that's one of the things about white supremacy uh racism white supremacy we're not talking about an attitude. We're just mm -hmm. not talking about, I don't like you or I don't care for you. That's not, who cares if what you think of me anyways, you know, it's about the power that you have to influence or affect my life that concerns me. And black people now are not in much of a different position than we were 50 years ago when it comes to power. We need to address those issues of power because as long as a people have the power to do something, then you are at a position of powerlessness mm. in, in dealing with it. So we have to change the power relationship if we right. want to seek or if we want to experience true independence and true liberation. And that's what current phenomenon is all about. It's about empowering our now, community. Now, now, current phenomenon, that's an organization that you represent, correct? Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, local nonprofit organization made up of uh, members of the community that want change, want to affect change, and feel like that we are not, um, we're not getting the things that we need for our communities. We just see a lot of places where we, we're not getting what we need. So we decided amongst ourselves and uh, myself and uh, other members of the community with different talents, we, we decided that we would um, combine our talents, combine our resources, combine, combine our knowledge, and put forth actual strategies and actual programs and institutions that will empower instead of waiting on someone to do it for us. We just no longer can wait. So it's not necessarily one person doing everything but it's a lot of us or all of us should be doing something and um anybody who would like to uh be a part of a, a, a an organization that believes in the power of community over self or over your individual self and believes that um we we, we need to be empowered and develop that power then we are all open and maybe you know that is the missing pieces that we need even in, within our organization itself okay yeah you're speaking about the talent i think if my memory serves me right uh it was either uh booker t or uh frederick i think it was booker t washington said that you seek out the talented 10th in the community and through that that talented that talented individual will uproot the, 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 the individuals in the community 
and the community can prosper and grow. Yeah, I believe that was W.B. Du Bois that talked about the talented. Okay. There it is. Ten. There it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but you, uh, yeah, he that's that was um that was W. Du, uh, du Bois who 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 talked about the talented tent, and um you know and 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 since you brought him up, I I feel like we should pull from all of our ancestors who 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 was on the scene before us and on the front lines. So I pulled from people like Du Bois and, and Washington and mm -hmm. Garvey and, and all of those, that great line of divine um, that has brought us to this point. But I don't believe they brought us to this point so that we can say that we've made it. I believe the, the gains that we have made, which came through sacrifice, and who am I to, to disrespect those those uh, sacrifices that were made by others thinking that I have arrived and made it. No, we must continue to fight where they left off. And until we reach the ultimate goal of freedom and independence, it's plenty of fighting to be done. So, yeah, um, yeah. That, that makes sense. Uh, just thinking back into your history, as I said, you are a true leader in our community. Uh, we just, I just uh, mentioned to the uh, listening audience about how you or this is nothing new for you. You've been fighting for our justice and freedom in our community for a period of time when uh, it wasn't favorable for the masses. I mean, you were an isolated individual speaking mm -hmm. loud and speaking proud against an organization, a system. And I'm right. pretty sure you had some challenges then. Now I know another time where you were, were one of the speakers on a platform at the city of Monroe. Mm -hmm. and you were speaking about the racial divide that's actually taking place in our community and I remember that, how you also represented us in, 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 in our community. Now, uh, from when you speaking up like that for the community as a whole, do you ever receive any backlashes? All the time, because <clears throat> what I represent is I represent the voices of revolution. I represent, I, I represent the pain and, and, and in a lot of ways, the frustration of black people and of all our studies we we use history we believe history is the most qualified to reward our research so we we always have seen a divide when it comes to black leadership on the one hand you would have those who are willing to uh that that wants to be closer to the oppressor who wants to be loved by them and who wants to free themselves by being accepted by those who are already in power. That's on the one hand. And then on the other hand, you have those who feel like true power is being able to stand on your own two feet, um, being able to supply all of your needs, being able to, to like the constitution says, secure the blessings of liberty and freedom for ourselves and our posterity. So you always have that divide in the black community. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, even just look back at the civil rights era. You had some who were preaching, build for self, do for self, right. have your own communities, have your own resources and build yourself up that way you would you won't be vulnerable to or or at least you won't you won't have to worry about being accepted by other people and then you had those who believe that hey if we could just get these people to love us if we can just get these people to do right by us then things will get better so it's always going to be a divide it's always been a divide and as far as i'm concerned or like i see there always it always be there so we have to understand that first and foremost. We have to we have some internal issues that we have to deal with in in in, in this battle. And I represent the uh, the, the the voice of, of of being strong and independent again. You know, I'm not I'm no longer interested in being at the table of power, just always being a servant or, or in the back washing and cooking the food or cooking or washing dishes or something like that. That's not my position at the table of power. No, That's we right. need a seat at the table of power. You know what I'm saying? And, and instead of just being always the servants of, at the table. So it's, I believe it's time for the black man and the black woman to, uh, re, 
to, to, to reclaim their position in, um, in the world as a powerful being. I believe that our potential is greater than any other people on the planet. We have the ability, we have the potential, we have the talent, we have the intellect, we have the, uh, the skills to build and bring forth this um, utopia of paradise that we all look forward to. But the problem is we are still mentally enslaved. Um, we, and that's, we are, that's, that's very difficult to break. It's very difficult to break, especially after hundreds of years of, of being in a position of, 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 of where we're dependent on others. And um, not to mention the fact that we are being trained by our former enemies, our current enemies, if you, if you will. So we are, we are literally... Um, we we are literally. I'm, I'm sorry. I think I just got disconnected, but I'm, I'm back. All right. But, no uh, problem. but um, what was I? Here? Uh, you were just speaking about how we were di the the enemy is t educating us, yeah, clothing yeah. us, housing right. us. I, well, I'm pretty sure I was following. I think that's where you were going. Exactly. Exactly. And so until we deal, as long as we think and are trained by our enemies, there's no way we're gonna be able to solve our problems. We have to get back to us. We have to think from, a, from an African um, perspective. And uh, we, ha we have to literally redefine some things and unlearn some, some things. And Ooh, that's powerful there. That is powerful there because I've mentioned that before. And you, I mean, you really have to be a reader and a thinker to truly understand what you just said to unlearn. I'm at that stage. I mm -hmm. have to unlearn what I've learned because mm -hmm. it becomes normal. And sometimes we overlook so much of being dependent. We may not question a system because the system educated us. So we right. think that the independent way is, the, is not the norm. So that's very powerful to unlearn. But how do we unlearn a system? And, and the first step to unlearning is you have to learn you. You have to you have to have a thorough understanding of yourself because there's no way that you would be able to oppress or be able to keep oppressing a people who are historically conscious. That was one of the, I mean, this was, this is why the, the Caucasian is called the evil genius in the first place, because they literally destroyed our history, our culture, our names, our way of life, our manhood, they, they attacked us on every front. There has been no other people on the planet who have on, undergone the things that black people have gone through on the planet. And so we have to understand that in order to be able to even see clearly ourselves and in our, our relationship to others, we have to use our own identity and we have to use our own historical uh, content and it's, which is not the same as the European. I don't care what school you go to. You can go to the greatest of schools. As long as you are being educated from another people's psychology, you will never be able to solve your own problems. So you have to get back to yourself. You have to learn about yourself, which is something that you, you're going to have to do on your own. Uh, you know, we're going to have to set up programs and institutions because it's not the enemy's job to educate you. Why would they educate you into power when they know that when you become powerful, they have to concede some of their power. So let's stop expecting for other people to do it. We're going to have to just go ahead and make up in our minds that we're going to have to affect some change. We're going to have to, cha have to change some of our uh, behavioral patterns. We're going to have to train up a generation to understand what power is, because when we talk about power, a lot of people get real edgy. Oh, my God, he's talking about power. But power is the thing that is necessary for life. There's mm -hmm. no life without power. You know, um, I don't care if um, if I'm having a, a, a meeting with with. Uh, with, with the voice of the community right now, if my computer was to power off right now, everything is shut down. We need power. Power is essential to life and survival. 
And so um, I believe it is our duty and responsibility to, to, to make sure that we're doing all that we can now, cannot wait. And that was, and we, I talked about current phenomenon mm -hmm. earlier, and we got the name literally because anything that you're going to do, it has to be done now because that's all you have. Tomorrow doesn't exist. Even when tomorrow gets here, it's still going to be now. All you have to take advantage of is now. Therefore, the definition current, which means the present time. And then, um, you know, we talk about phenomenon. But in, if, if you, you remember in the Willie Lynch letter, a uh, guy, guy by the name of Willie Lynch, and it doesn't matter whether the story is true or not, we can see some of the, uh, the, the, the things that are put in there we can see the effect of those today. But one of the things that he said, and it stuck with us, is that um, he said that what we have created, talking about breaking the, uh, the African man and woman down from its natural independent state into a dependent, psychologically frozen state, he said what we have created is, is, is an orbit that will turn on its axis forever or unless a phenomenon occurs. So what we want to do is we want to put everyone on notice that that phenomenon that was prophesied way back in 1712 on the James River saying that unless these people get back to who they are, we have created an, an orbit that will turn on its axis forever. Unless a phenomenon occurs, well, we are here to serve notice to everyone that that phenomenon that was prophesied is now. It is current. So Therefore, we have the name current phenomenon. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Relating, we're speaking about our internal local community. What about the extended community? Speaking about our brothers in other states, uh, regionally and also nationally, uh, dealing with, uh, with, uh, with our brother George, George Floyd. Um, we saw in the past, uh, Kaepernick, he took a knee on the ground to represent his stance. Now we see the knee being used in a way to harm and to dismantle and to kill a person. So do you believe this is the frustration that individuals in society, they're, they're, uh, they're voicing uh, their frustration by something that people have been verbalizing as a riot, but you indicated that there's a difference between a riot and a revolt. Absolutely. Um, yes, um, I, I do believe that what we see now going on with the protests that's occurring all over the nation, I, that, that speaks of the pain and the suffering and the frustration of people who are fed up. Mm -hmm. And um, social disruption is one of the most powerful tools of the oppressed. And so regardless of whether a person feel like a person feel like it is irrational or illogical, it cannot be ignored. Point yes. blank period. Regardless of whether how you feel about whatever you you know you've seen, I don't agree with all of this, I agree with all of that. I don't agree, I don't, I don't believe in no type of violence whatsoever. We hear these things from our own communities of you know, speaking about. Uh, speaking about those who have decided to uh, to take take it upon themselves to uh, to actually it, it's bigger than just going out and just 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 creating destruction for no reason. What it is is a rebellion against authority because government the government has a contract with the people that they represent the interests of the people. And, and we got to remember back in the uh, American Revolution that whenever the, the former uh, citizens of Britain um, came to America in hopes for life, liberty, and the pursuit of property, which they later changed to the pursuit of happiness, um, these people, their quarrel with the British government was they were not being properly represented. And so they came up with this in the Boston Tea Party, and the, the, the battle cry was no taxation without representation. So here we have 
uh, over 50 million black people who do not feel that they are being properly represented in this society. And so just like they did a, uh, a, a revolution and, and, and revolted against their former, uh, former colonizers or impress, uh, oppressors, which is completely different because they were never uh, enslaved. They were just an extension of the, 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 the British crown. So when they decided amongst themselves that they would build for themselves, become independent and sign that declaration of independence, because of the fact that they weren't being properly represented and they were being taxed, that was an act of a declaration of war. Mm. And it was accepted and celebrated and is celebrated to this day. Now, black people, you have to look at yourself because they have a saying in America that says, the land of the free, home of the brave. Right. So I ask you, are you brave? Because we're not being properly represented right now just like they weren't being properly represented during the time of the Declaration of Independence in, in America. So I ask you, are you a part of the brave? Are we a part of being taken on the cowardly role? Because regardless of what we feel, or regardless of the situation, we have to deal with reality. And that reality is that nothing's going to change unless we decide for ourselves that we will change. And so we might say that, um, well, we're doing it wrong. We don't need to do it like that. Come on, man. We got to understand that there is no revolution that is legal. If it is illegal, it's either e illegal or extra legal. And so we have to understand that there are no rules when it comes to revolting a revolution. Matter of fact, the main people who are talking about, I don't believe in violence, have to understand that the people who have a monopoly on violence and only want to be the only ones who can perpetuate violence is those in power. <laughs> you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those are the only ones who want to be the ones who can say that we're using violence. And those are the only ones who have to this point on a massive scale use violence. So yes, violence is the language of the unheard. Violence of the lang is the language of those who are oppressed and those who feel like we, we, we must demand a change. Otherwise, this society cannot exist the way it is. And I, for one, am standing with those people and those voices because I am not a coward and I am one of the brave. And I ask you, are you, are you the brave? Are you a part of the brave? All right, there we go. Uh, Brother Mike Abrams, uh, uh, one of the representatives of CPI, Current Phenomenon, and his basic message to us, one of the tenets is that if change is going to happen, we, and the word we, the pronoun, we must make a change because power is never just going to be given. We must demand it. And, we, and at times, we must take it. We must take it. And yeah. there, there may be, see, see, the thing is, when they did what they, they when I say they, when, when, when white supremacy racism decided that they will control all of the resources or the majority of the resources on the planet, mm -hmm. the land on the planet, and develop a political system in which everyone else must follow, that was a direct act of war on the black man and the black woman. That was an act of war. The fact that you don't have your own name, that you are not able to speak your own language, the fact that you are not able to, uh, to, to, to build your families and work for hundreds of years for free, that was an act of war. And so we, there will be an effect that trickles down for hundreds of years. And then all you gotta do is look at the data Right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. as a black man, we got blacks killing blacks, you know, and I don't believe in the notion of black on black crime. It's just crime. Because anywhere you go, whites kill whites, Asians kill Asians within their own sector and communities, blacks kill blacks. So we're going to dismiss the notion of black on black crime. 
But if you look at the numbers and the logistics of, of, of what's going on with black people, our numbers are higher as far as, far as the, 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 the murder and the self-destruction that we impose on others. And a lot of people use that to say, you see, that's why we need to treat them savagely. You listen to their music. That's why we need to treat them savagely. You listen, look at us on, the, uh, on, on TV and through the social media platforms, you see a people that sometimes look like they're out of their mind. But after 400 of years, it would have been easy to predict, pre, pre, to predict that these people are going to experience some type of interference or psychological interference in which they do not believe and think like they should as themselves. Because they, we, have been, we have been conditioned to not be like ourselves. In fact, the, the standard that has been set is that the further away from blackness that you are, the better you are in this society. So you got people running around trying not to be black and trying not to look black and don't look like that and don't talk like that and, 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 and don't dress like that. And all of these are things that move further away from who we are and, and further clo and closer to them. And so it's a big political game that they're playing. And um, we're not going to have everybody, unfortunately, that understands my viewpoint. And I understand it. And I'm okay with it. But, uh, but we don't need everybody. All we need is, is those who, are, 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 who have a desire to change, who want that change. And we can go out and we can um, – we, we can – do the, the building process that is necessary for us to become a powerful people. And so we believe that that process starts with us. We believe that there are gonna to have to be programs and institutions in place that train up the next generation to take over our communities. No longer can we sit back and accept uh, all of our businesses in our community owned by other people. And you have other people coming into our neighborhoods and, and creating a fortune for themselves while we sit, while we accept the crumbs and fight for the scraps on the bottom. And then we turn around and wonder, um, you know, why, why we can't advance when we're giving all our money to everybody else. Those are the things that we cannot, we can no longer allow. We have to have a program that teaches the next generation how to, how to gain power. And if it's not, and if we don't do that, then we're vulnerable to those who do have, who are doing the things necessary to make sure that they uh, stay in power. Well, that's pretty powerful what you're saying that in order to change, we, ha we have to make a change. And the mindset of most uh, individuals in our community, they attended a attend or have attended a public school system and the public school system there, as far as I know, the public school system from the lower levels all the way up to high school, they don't teach independence. They teach how to go out and go work for someone. Correct. So how do we change that? Well, um, it's going to take the response. It's going to take responsible people who understand that um, we have no one that will do this for us. We're going to have to make a decision to do this for ourselves. We have the resources available to us. Black people are in a very unique position. As I said earlier, we make over a trillion dollars annually. We have some of the most brilliant minds, uh, the most skillful. Um, we have been blessed beyond measure with our potential, but it just not, has not translated into, and we have not organized it into something that we can consider tangible as for in the realm of, 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 of power. So it's going to take the responsibility of those who have resources to say, hey, instead of me um, making my money, uh, making my have a many millions, hundreds of thousands of dollars and moving across town and saying, forgetting about the rest or the masses of black people, it's going to take them to say, hey, I know how to run business. I know this skill. I know this trade. I know this work. I'm not going to be selfish and only look out for myself and my family. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reach back and train somebody, teach somebody, help somebody, pull somebody up. That way that person can build themselves up and reach back, pull somebody up instead of always looking at each other as a part of the enemy. And that's, and, and which is a plan of white supremacy as well. 
as long as we see ourselves as the enemy, then we'll always continue to fight ourselves. So we must, we must have a, a, a code that we have to follow. And it has to be pushed by the responsible people. No longer can we allow those of us in, that live within our communities to go out and terrorize our communities that we live in and have us in the, in the house scared and fearful because the youngsters out of control. I want to know where the OGs at. Who's going to go out and tell the, 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 the next generation we're not allowing that any longer, you know? The, the, the rape and the, and, 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 the, and the destroying of our communities, we're making a stand, you know, and we have to make this stand. And unfortunately, it's gonna take, it, there may be some difficult times in there, but we have to do this if we're gonna reclaim our, our position. Because as long as they see us being destructive towards ourselves, why do they feel the need to respect us when we, do nothing but disrespect ourselves. Mm -hmm. So stop waiting on other people. Stop waiting on, especially of people from outside of our group to do this for us. This is something that must be done for us and by us. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm charging every individual who calls themselves someone who wants to work towards that empowerment. They need to do something. It can't be one or two people or a few people here and there doing everything but it has to be everybody doing something. And so that's where we got to start. We got to look within. And once we become powerful enough and start to galvanize and we see our communities, businesses that are owned by us in our communities, and we start uplifting our communities and, and, and putting away some of these inappropriate behavioral patterns, then we can start to develop ourselves to go against others. Wow. So we have to start with us. Yeah, the revolution starts right here in our own community. Uh, before it starts in the community, as like you started the, um, the program off with, it starts within the home first. The man teaching his family, and through that, then it expands out. And from that, man, you you shared a lot for us to dissect, and I appreciate your time today. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you go, but give you the last few words for the community, how we or what we should, should be doing to improve the state of our community. Well. I'll say this, um, I've heard a lot of people cry out about, we don't have the right type of leadership. We need a Malcolm X of our day. My question is, what did you do with the first Malcolm X? Um, because he spoke the very same things that I'm speaking about over uh, uh, almost 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and not just Malcolm X, but many others are speaking this very same thing. And so we have to understand that there was a fork in the road at one point. And we made a decision that the way in order for us to, to, to get what we want, liberation, freedom, independence, is to get closer to our oppressors. And we see the results of that. And here it is in 2020, we are still crying out for justice. The only way that you can break the arm of those who oppress us is you have to take away, take away their ability to oppress us. And that will mean that you're gonna have to get some strength yourself. You are, gonna have, you are going to have to be powerful yourself. So I ask you, are you the brave? Are you a part of the brave? This is for the land of the free and the home of the brave. You have to be courageous during this time. So I ask you, what will it be? You have to look at yourselves and say, am I going to shy away from certain things or am I going to get into the fight? Because it doesn't matter what happens to me. It's about advancing the collective society because so many before us have sacrificed and we and their blood, which was spilled, it was spilled because in order for us to have a better life. So I ask you, will you betray the blood of your ancestors by being selfish? Or will you honor the blood of your ancestors and pick up the fight where they left off? 
Pretty powerful. Once again, thank you, Mike. I appreciate you taking some time and sharing that great information as we sit back and digest it and attempt to dissect it, but it's very powerful. We definitely have to take it, become brave, as you said, and we have to uh, sacrifice because instead of just getting the scraps off those that are in power, we must create a legacy for ourselves and for our children and the future generations. So thank you again. Yeah, and, I, and I'll end with saying that if there is anyone who, who feels like they, they want to become a part of an organization that is about empowerment and uplifting, please visit www.currentphenomenon.org and uh, sign up. Uh, uh, to, to, we have a contact list. You can reach out to us. Um, we are currently in the process right now of, of, of getting a building so that we can have a cultural resource center where we can train people uh, and empower people and we can use any donations or uh, anybody wants to, you know, to, to, to become a part of that movement, visit currentphenomenon.org, reach out to us and we would love to get with you. All right, thank you again. Thank you, big brother.